Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for so much. Another beautiful and blessed day. Hope everybody's doing well as I give God all the honor, all the glory, and definitely all the praise. Giving the great shout out to everybody, YouTube family, everybody. You all know who you are. Since we've been dealing with women in these last few videos, a woman, now I want to just go on and make this part three and um, tie this in with the women also. And I want to title this video, I'm so glad the women spoke. I'm glad the women spread the gospel. I'm glad they spoke. Now I know off top I'm probably going to make a lot of preachers mad with this video because you got such a great debate on a woman should remain silent. They, sh they can't preach. They can't prophesy. They can't do this. Well, I want to just focus on Jesus a little bit and his ministry also. And I want to give a shout out to my man Dante. Your question on 1 Timothy 2, 11 and 12, which is another popular scripture everybody debate about. Now, first of all, I always say this, brother, in this video. You ain't going to get no debate here. What I will say is what the word of God says, and I will move out of the way. And I know you're not trying to debate, but I'm saying it for a reason because I already know after I make this video, it's going to be a lot of people that want to debate. And I'm not going to even respond back to them. Now, that scripture says in 1 Timothy 2, I believe, chapter 11, I mean chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, it says a woman should learn in quietness and full submission. I do not permit a woman to teach, uh-oh, or to have authority over a man. She must be silent. Now, we all know we're talking about Paul, Apostle Paul. See, in the church, God assigned it different roles to men and women. And you will see right here where Paul restricts women from serving in roles of teaching and or having spiritual authority over men. Like nowadays, no, a woman shouldn't be pastoring, a woman shouldn't be teaching, and a woman can't do this, a woman can't do that. Well, let's go a little bit deep with these scriptures because I always tell people, when you just look at a scripture and just start quoting them and never understand what they mean, that's where you do a lot of messing up at. So it was really... Paul saying, be quiet, women, shut up. Or let's get a little bit deeper with it. Let's find out the true understanding on a lot of this. Now, I'm going to go a little bit deep with this for y'all who like to follow along. Some people say it's Paul is pretty much telling, keeping women from serving in their roles of teaching and having spiritual authority over men. Now, like I say, you see nowadays we have a conflict about women pastor in the church and all that kind of stuff. Well, let's go back to the first century. It's what people don't do. You got to study, folks. In the first century, women were pretty much uneducated. When we're talking about the first century now, they was uneducated. But in these scriptures, nowhere it tells you about education. Let's just say educational status. Now, I'm going to be a little blunt with this when I say this. If education was a qualification for ministry, the majority of Jesus' disciples, they wouldn't have been qualified. Let me say that again. If you needed education and schooling for ministry, the majority of the disciples would have been disqualified. They wouldn't have not been qualified. Now, I know a lot of people don't think about little stuff like this. But that's why I always talk about ain't nothing wrong with getting a degree. Learn all you can. But at the same time, when Jesus taught, he taught well. People sat at Jesus' feet. I would say, knock yourself out with getting a degree. But to sit here and say, who cannot spread the word of God? That's crazy. I thank God that the women spoke up. And I'm going to get you to my point in a minute while I title this video. I thank God that the women spoke up. Like I said about the disciples. Now, we have to also remember, Paul in this, we're looking at Ephesus. The women of Ephesus, see, you remember back then when you talk about the different things that a woman should and should not do, or like the other scripture, I don't want to get into that other scripture because I did a video about that already, about a woman should remain silent. When people don't look at who was Paul talking to at that time and why did Paul say a woman should remain silent, what was they blurting out in church? But people take their scripture and say, this is why a woman can't preach this is why I'm glad the women spoke. And when you look at the city of Ephesus, 
They was known for that 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 false stuff and them Roman goddesses. See, some gonna say Paul was only referring to the husbands and wives, not men and women in general. So, but it's each to their own how they look at that. You look at it how you look at it. But women, now let's get to the women. Thank God for the women. Somebody gonna say you just trying to get on the women's side. No, I'm getting on the truth side. If you are on the truth side, male or female, I'm with you. Women were the first evangelists. Oh, JT, now you sitting up here lying, no? So to all the big time people who look at this stuff talking about a woman can't preach, women were the first evangelists. You would have thought the disciples would have been pretty much on game on they on their game like they should have been, but no, women were the first evangelists. As they spread the good news of his resurrection. When you look at the crucifixion, when you look at how Jesus always told the disciples ahead of time what was going to happen, how it was going to happen, when it was going to happen, out of all those disciples, how many of them doubted Jesus? How many of them still didn't believe? But it is, it's amazing when he told a woman, when he tell a woman to do something, they jump on it just like that. Men, why are we got that problem? Why are we so late with everything? When the Lord tell us to do something, we got to sit back and, I don't know about that, Lord. Uh, I don't know about that. Thank God the women spoke up. I'm going to get you to my message. I just had to let a few things out before I get all the way into this. That message hmm, has been broadcast throughout the world in the following centuries down to us today. Where was the disciples? Several. Let, let's get a little bit real with this. It was several faithful women who witnessed they went to the they went to the tomb. Remember and remember the stone was already rolled away. The Bible told us in so many ways. Now I'm paraphrasing. Go spread the news. It didn't just say men. Matter of fact, the disciples wasn't even there. But go spread the news. What about when the Lord used the donkey? He could have used anybody. He even used the donkey. He could win and found anything. See, e even the rocks would cry out. Somebody somebody say amen in a minute. I don't want no rocks crying out for me. Let's get real here in this video. The women spoke. Let me go a little bit deeper with the Samaritan woman at the well. Hmm. The Samaritan woman, which Jews and Samaritans didn't even get along. And if you do the study on Samaritan women, they were saying so many words, let's say it like this. They was double cursed. And for Jesus to associate himself with a Samaritan woman, that says it all right there. That shows you another reason why he don't care nothing about religion. If you really knew the study on Jews and Samaritans, then you'll feel me in this video. The Samaritan woman showed me a whole lot about, Jesus showed me a lot by using the Samaritan woman. Because I say they didn't get along, period. And just for the Lord to have that conversation, speaking to her. Jesus asked her for a drink. And that woman was shocked because Jews and Samaritans sure wouldn't drink out of the same cup. But I like to call that the conversation at the well. He's talking to that woman. And y'all know the story. I did a video about that, how she had the men and how Jesus didn't condemn her. He told her what was going to happen. And he was the Messiah. He even knew everything about her and what she was doing wrong. Because he said, woman, you have told the truth. And the one you with ain't even yours. See, y'all know the story. That's why I'm not going to get into it. But the conversation at the well with Jesus and this woman, my point is, thank God the women spoke up because what would happen if they didn't? That woman, that Samaritan woman ran back and told I don't know how many people about Jesus. Because Jesus knew everything about her. I wonder how many women and men came to Christ after that. What was she doing? Spreading the gospel. What do a preacher do? Spread the gospel. What do a, a, a evangelist do? Spread the gospel. Hmm. Somebody catch me in a minute. So many Samaritans after that point, they start believing in God. Hmm. They start believing. See, here's the thing to the people that like to, to debate. If you look at this very closely, Jesus planted the word in that Samaritan woman's heart. But this is the thing why I always say people debate so much they miss out on the whole point. It, it wasn't about, it ain't about who going to debate about who going to preach the word and this. The thing we need to look at is pointing people 
to Christ. Don't matter who you are. Point people to Christ. Spread in the gospel. That's the whole point. You want to debate about should a woman preach? A woman should remain silent. But if a woman can point some lost soul to Christ, tell them about salvation. What's the problem? He said this gospel must be preached. He didn't just say men. Go. Hmm. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we all must know about Christ. There's going to come a day, people. Every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that he, he is Lord. If there was a family and the husband died and the children and the wife is still left around and that man didn't know nothing about God, but the woman do. Is that woman wrong for spreading the gospel to her own children about Jesus? Is she wrong for going out to spread the gospel to somebody else? Who are we, uh-oh, to say who God can and can use? Out of all the walk with the disciples, those 12 uncommon men who seem more confused than, oh man, I don't know how many people. That's why I always say learn the difference between apostle and disciple. You wonder why Paul was an apostle and not a disciple. See, the disciples were followers. But when it comes to that real deal, breaking down teaching, he had to go and use Paul. But when Paul was Saul, one of the most, like I always say, the greatest persecutor of the Christians, put him in the prison and killed many of them. Even was right there to watch Stephen get stoned. But God changed him on that Damascus road. You know the story. He converted old Saul to Paul who was able to knock out about 13 or 14 of them books in the New Testament. Paul seemed like he was more into the word and close than any other disciples to me in so many ways. But I always go back and think about my boy John the Baptist. Hmm. But the point is in this video I'm glad the women spoke up. If that woman wouldn't have went and told them people back in the city about Jesus, the Samaritan woman, oh man, they probably wouldn't have never known. If a woman, if the women wasn't faithful right there and, and looking in the tomb and knowing that he was gone and then spread the gospel, hmm, how hard would it have been? Men, what are we doing? And the reason I say this, I'm not jumping on nobody's side but the truth. But men, it is amazing to me how a lot of us just don't even go to church. We sit back and complain about everything, about a woman. But yet still, the women is outdoing us. The women is outnumbering us. The women are the church. But now, like when I say about the body, y'all know how I am about a building versus the body. But my point is, how many churches are sitting up and it's just all women? And more men are complaining. And you got more and more preachers debating and having conflicts. This is why people can't even worship with each other because I don't believe a woman should spread the gospel. That woman got on pants. All this old stupid, ignorant stuff that ain't got nothing to do with getting into heaven. A woman, a woman shouldn't wear pants. A woman, you, you running more women off because you more worried about they pants than they salvation. See, I know I done made a lot of folks mad at this video because I speak the truth. I thank God for the women, and I'm glad that they spoke out in the Bible, and I'm glad that they are. Speaking out now, are they all perfect? Nope. Men, are we all perfect? Nope. We all got flaws. We all got shortcomings. I don't care who you are, bishop on down. There's something wrong with every last one of us. Why? I know that for a fact. Because we in the flesh. And until we get in that glorified body, we will be just like Christ all the way in that kind of way. Because sin, the Lord don't play no part of. We do. God bless you. And God keep you.